if that's what it takes to get attention on him, because he was a somebody, now he's a nobody sitting in prison, so now, you know, oh, well, I've got safe, so now the attention's back on him, and then this is how they operate. I, I yet, I, I, I have big debates with people about this, but I have yet to, to, to see any proof that any psychopath ever finds Jesus, because there's nothing in them <laughs> to, to accept Jesus. They're of a different seed. I don't know, they just kind of fall in spirits in uh, human shells. And well, they just we, kind of go from one thing to another one, and their Jesus is the Sananda that's coming. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and and their Messiah is the Antichrist, and that's what they're doing. They're working hard to bring in to bring forth uh, Lucifer's kingdom on earth. I came up with some interesting material that I was going to go over during Daniel Ott's show that I never got to. You know how it is doing Daniel's show? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You can have all this stuff prepared, never go near it. We had listener calling questions practically the whole time, and and I've always been a big fan of listener calling and having interaction with listeners. Uh, but, uh, you know, I just stumbled across, I guess it's just like the light bulb going off in your head, you know, one of those one of those things. It's like i gotta, I got to search more into that. i got to uh, study more into that. Because uh, we know Maitri is coming, and he's going to be a big uh, you know, facade of the New Age, but also we know Sananda's coming because he's Jesus. Okay, mm. so what happens if they bring in this Sananda and then kill him, proving that Christianity is a hoax, and their lies proving Christianity is a hoax? Because they can't have all these beasts running around claiming they're God. It's going to only be the Satan. Yeah, exactly. So, so what happens if if they do that? If if they bring this Sananda in, hi, I'm Jesus of Christianity, and meanwhile they're persecuting all of his followers. So, what kind of a Jesus can he be? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I think um, I think there'll be like a, a Christ consciousness, like a, a generic form. They won't say that they are uh, the Christ. They'll say I am of Christ consciousness. And yeah, I'm they say a, they're Christed individual. They're Christed ascended masters. Christed being an yeah, office. Christ yeah, is an office. Yeah, author. I'm the highest level. So you know, I'm the I, you know I'm the top guy, folks. So here I am. You know. Yeah, and you can you can obtain it too. <laughs> That's their biggest push, because they want everybody to jump into the fifth dimension with them, within their minds, meditate on it. I don't know if you listened to the show I did on that about the fifth dimension. Oh, yeah. Uh, where they just want everybody to focus so they think that they can escape linear time and jump into eternal time by everybody meditating and having a mass consciousness of everybody jumping into this fifth dimension and making it happen by thought. Oh. And so by doing, Satan would escape punishment, because he knows his punishment is coming. Oh, I, 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 I'm sure. Uh, I, I'm sure they they know pretty much what's going down, and <laughs> they. Uh, I don't know. Uh, there, there's different factions too that are vying for number one position. Yeah. And that they're always like there's different scenarios right now. Uh, you know, the aliens are going to attack like War of the Worlds, mm -hmm. which is a good movie. I recommend to everybody. And then uh, the other is they're going to be bring peace and harmony and, and yada yada yeah but, but I, I think that peace and harmony will come first and then um, when that doesn't work bomb everybody <laughs> yeah well like <laughs> like in the name of peace they'll destroy uh, mankind it, I've seen it both ways too I've always said there's more than one road they're, they're not counting on just one way and so it's difficult to sit here and say exactly this and this and this is going to happen right because they have so many different routes they can use uh, well, they they like they, they like to um, they like to have different card hands to play. Yeah, and they keep one group focused on that one, another group focused on that one. So everybody has their own their own opinions and views on exactly what's going to happen. It's just saying, okay, this can happen or this or this, being ready for all of them. <laughs> yeah, and it makes it really really hard to to really know what what's going to go down until it actually does go down. Oh yeah, no, you have to just sit and watch daily events. You just sit and watch. But yeah. like I know the the Rothschilds uh, of uh, Europe and the Rockefellers of America. I mean, they're always having turf wars. <laughs> yeah. They're always having assassination attempts. Yeah. I mean, you know, they the, the common misconception is that oh well, we're all uh, working for Satan and we're all united. No, everybody's out to grab whatever they can get. Well, everybody in Satanism hates each other. Everybody wants everybody else's position. Yes, it's exactly. A, it's a backstabbing, hate, un, you know, unthankful, very greedy world. I mean, there's nothing that's united about Satan's kingdom. They all hate each other. 
Oh, extremely so. And so, you know, it's not much different, I hate to say, than Christianity today. Put ten Christians in a church, you'd have to run and hide. I mean, put ten Christians in a room of different denominations, <laughs> it would be a war. Oh, denominations, <laughs> it, it destroys uh, Christianity, and this is why they, they were, you know, uh, put forth onto yeah. the board. You know, to it's, divide it's, Christians. Yeah, and then so the, these, this whole thing about everybody agreeing on the concept of a one world order, but nobody agreeing on who gets to rule it. And then, like I've said on this show, Satan coming in, not eating any of them. <laughs> They're going to always be the first ones on the train out. But I think we're, we're so close. I think War of the Worlds pretty well established how close we were. Because that movie is, is um, it really spells it out. And one, uh, one movie, uh, that really spells it out in black and white, as far as I'm concerned, that's my opinion, but it is V. I mean, that, that told everything from A to Z what's going to go down. And, and as time has progressed, I mean, this is from 1984 or something, it's, it's been right on schedule with everything that's been happening. So the V series? Yeah. I heard Stargate, the Stargate episodes, talk about our time travel capacity. I've never yep. really, I've watched the show a few times. I don't know if you get it in Canada. It's called Stargate. Yeah, I, I, it's a, it, yeah, it's kind of a boring show. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> kind of out there. I think MacGyver, yeah, he's in it. I don't know if you remember MacGyver. I can't remember his name. But they must, uh, I think, I think they, they, they can time travel. I think they can see the future and stuff. Because I think it's self-evident in all the fake Jesuses that have come before. Like Mithra and, and uh, Temas and, and all those, they, they were direct imitations of Jesus. But fortunately, Jesus says all those who have come before me are, are you know, robbers. Yeah, I'm thinking that this Mithra. In fact, tonight, if I, you didn't come on the show, I was just going to talk about uh, my article on, on where the churches went wrong and the worship of Mithra. I think it's the Sananda. I think this, this this Mithra just perfectly just fits everything about the Sananda. Yeah, hey, let's, yeah, could be. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and so I'm, I was looking at the parallels today, and so I was having a laugh over the parallels you sent out over my New World Order list between Paul and Jesus, and and, and Paul and, and some of his own writings, mostly his own writings, because he's so contradictory. And I was just sitting there laughing, going through all those. You pick out stuff I've never even picked out from my own website on Paul. Uh, but yeah. I pointed out over and over that you can read all of his books and compare them to the book of Galatians, and by the time he gets to Galatians, he's completely psycho. <laughs> oh, there's parts that, like, I'm still trying to figure out what he's talking about in Romans 7. And he, he, he's so self-absorbed, egotistical, and he brags, and, and as you say, he contradicts himself. And you were one of these people. Now, when I started New World Orders about, what, four years ago now, you were one of my original moderators. You started that list with me at the time. Uh, I'd asked you to come on, and I, I have about maybe three on there. And uh, you you were still, you weren't uh, an anti-Paul person at all at that point. No. Uh, it's actually your site got me, and, uh, got into my head and kind of messed it up, and then I kind of went into a sort of a semi, I don't know, anxiety state for three or four days going, what is this now? Everything I believe in is out the window. But that pretty much got me on the road, and I started to wake up and like, oh, I mean, there you have the Nag Hammadi texts. I mean, they're they're far better uh, to learn by than, than Paul's teachings. But everything's been removed to make room for Paul's endless letters. Exactly. That's what somebody asked me last week. The same thing I said. They left out good books to make room for Paul. <laughs> yeah, and Paul is the foundation of the church, and, and it's just, uh, and I, what really, really shocked me was the fact that, that he was always at odds with the apostles, and he's always talking out of the side of his mouth against them, all through scripture. I don't know, people don't believe it.